Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of DFS Fantasy Baseball Picks and such a gross slate tonight. I'm going to turn it into a kind of a combo video and I'll talk about the NFL showdown slate too. So if that interests you, stay tuned after the baseball talk, which should probably only go last about five minutes, and we'll talk some football. So this should be a short video overall today. Uh, so we are supposed to have a five-game slate tonight. New York and Boston got rained out. So it's off of Fandle. So we're down to four games on that slate. And DK, they still have it on. And they did actually have it on the other night when it when it happened. So we'll have to see if um if they continue to keep on it. But like it's been so inconsistent as to who the pitchers might be for this that I don't know where to go. So we'll we'll, we'll talk about the New York and the Boston game as if it is going to happen. But the other caveat that we have is that there's an 88% chance of rain all during the Colorado and San Francisco game, of course. So we might actually have one of three games tonight. So let's, and two of the three games, you've got really good matchups um, of contenders. And one of them's within like the division. And it could be, definitely be like either a, a decent offensive game decent pitching game so let's just get into it so first game we have texas rangers and toronto blue jays both fighting for playoffs and playoff spots so you have evaldi and gossman which on paper should be a good matchup for pitchers but evaldi has been come back from an injury he really hasn't pitched that deep he really hasn't put up good numbers so i think i, I can't really play even though it's a small slate, I think it's very risky to play him. If if you think that, you know, the first game, the you know, three innings is just a tune-up and he's going to go out there and be able to go like five innings. And yes, the Blue Jays have some prospects called up and they're not as strong as they have been in the past. And they're still missing Belt and Chapman and they're not hitting as well as last year, et cetera, et cetera. In a deep GPP, if you want to play Valdi, then go for it. I have no confidence, so that's why I have him in the fade list. Gossman, I think, is by far top pitcher on slate. Even though Texas is a is a tough matchup here, they haven't been hitting as much recently. It's besides Robbie Grossman, who has um, caught fire recently, uh, you know, Garver's been good. Glau had a home run last night, or was it the outfielder? I can't remember which one. Um, but uh, you know, there's there's definitely some power and potential here in the Texas lineup. But I think Gossman has enough to neutralize that. Bat wise, uh, Texas is obviously the leverage stack, and you know if you're playing GPPs, then you're definitely going to have a Texas stack. If everybody's playing Gossman and he does have a bad game, and some of these guys continue to hit, like I said, focus on Grossman, Low, Seager. I, I definitely take the the lefties or switch hitters here. Uh, maybe Traveris, Heim, you know. So uh, not Josh Smith, Evan Carter. Yes, uh, at the bottom of the order, the rookie. He's He's fine. Josh Smith's more of a defensive player. And it, for the righties, I mean, if it's if it's Garver or Simeon, I mean, they both work because once you get to the bullpen, it definitely could potentially uh, be in play. Toronto Bats, uh, again, I think they're great in a GPP here. Or if everything else rains out, they might be by default, like somebody that you have to play in cash. I'll explain that when I do the lineup breakdowns. Tampa Bay and the Orioles. This is a battle for the AL East. Baltimore lost two out of three to St. Louis. They uh, Their bats have gone cold. Uh, so, And the Rays are within two games of them. So this is a crucial four-game series. They could end up tied at the end. Baltimore could have a six-game lead. Baltimore could be behind by two games. But Baltimore has not been swept in any series, I think, back to 2022. So and that's a pretty so they've won at least one game in in each series. So you have Saval and Bradish here pitching wise. I, I think both are in play. Uh, uh, Bradish is definitely favored here, and uh, Baltimore has a higher total at four point five three. Uh, Saval or the Tampa Bay totals just a little bit below four at three point nine seven. So wind blowing in. It is a pitcher's park, nine miles per hour. 76 degrees no rain so should be a decent night for baseball but the park and the wind should help mitigate power a little bit to help those pitchers bat wise i think baltimore is always the top gpp lineup i think it, it definitely 
with Rushman, Henderson, Mountcastle got injured, so hurt his shoulder. Hopefully, it's not too serious. So that means O'Hearn should be at first base. So there's another lefty there. So your your top five here you, it, are all have the splits advantage, and either be switch hitters or, or lefties. So I sack Baltimore one through five. Uh, if you want to do look a little cheap and or cute and put their one like Hicks or Frazier and do like a wraparound thing, I get that too. Also, if you want to be a little bit different. Uh, Tampa Bay is just pretty much a leverage stack. Uh, I would take Lau and Low there, and uh, Riley is his hit really well. He's been a platoon player. That just read some articles like if he actually played every single day, like how good he would be number wise. Um, with that, so next game we have uh, the Yankees and the Red Sox. It's Clark Schmidt and Garrett Whitlock, they say, but I, I see like other people listed in, in different places. So I don't know who the pitchers are going to be here. I think if you need a cheap pitcher, you can take one or the other. I think I prefer Schmidt over Whitlock. So you definitely have to see how it rolls out. And I think you need the bats in this game. Uh, Boston, I definitely, if they're in, I would love to do a lefty stack there. In Fenway, it looks like the wind's blowing up about maybe five miles per hour. We're going to have to see who's in the lineup for the second half of the DH or doubleheader. Um, sorry, I just want to tell you DH because you might think designated hitter. But I love the lefties here. So Verdugo, Devers, Cassius, Yoshida, I had them all stacked up last night when the game rained out. And you can throw in, you know, Turner within the stack or, you know, whoever else you want to make your fifth or just go four there. And then the Yankees are just so cheap um florel leading off should be like 2-1 like really uh and, and i love this guy even before dominguez came up like he was one that i i looked at last year and like I, he plays our local triple a affiliate here in wilkesbury scranton and he definitely has speed and power and everything so he should be uh leading off there you know judge if you can get up to him Wells is a cheap catcher. There's only like two four. So uh Jake Bowers um in the lineup. There, there's definitely some cheap pieces here to make if if course field, if everything's perfect and it's gonna play and you want to get Gossman and in the bats in course field, who which aren't really priced up too bad tonight, then you might need some of these cheap Yankees. Or then again, like I like said I like the Red Sox too in um in some lines. Minnesota and the Chicago White Sox, Maeda and Urena. Urena, I believe, was on Colorado. He's just a horrible pitcher. Uh, so the, the Twins are definitely in play here bat-wise and not playing Urena even on like a small slate. And Maeda, I think, is definitely either your SP2 or your SP1 if you um, can get that uh, Boston-New York game in or if you if Colorado if the Coors game is going to play, then maybe if you want to take and pair him with, with Webb, I get that also. So bat wise, Minnesota's got to be your top stack here, or your fill ins. Like they're so cheap, they're in a great spot here against a horrible pitcher. Anybody on the roster that plays is in play. White Sox, I think they're definitely cheap, also against Maeda. Uh, but you know, I'm not going to play like five seven for Luis Roberts. Uh, you know, just mix and match, and maybe Gavin Sheets or Ben Attendi, like are the only ones I'd really look at there as like cheap fill ins. And then we have the Coors game Logan Webb, Chase Anderson. Webb's definitely interested in Colorado. Actually, pitchers against them haven't been bad, even at Coors recently, even with the guys back in the lineup that have gotten healthy. Chase Anderson is horrible. I would not play him. And then Giants, whatever your favorite ones are. Um, well, Colorado has many lefties in the bullpen, so uh, the lefties could be safe here, not as much as a pinch hit risk as um, they usually are. So obviously, yes, uh, Estrada stays in the game no matter what. Flores is more of a righty or lefty killer than a righty killer, but um, I think I'd rather take Wade at first base over him. Peterson. Hanniger, Bailey, a catcher, switch hitter, um, even J.D. Davis, Crawford, whoever plays, like they're all in play. And then the Rockies are GPP if this game plays against um, Logan Webb, I think are perfectly fine. So how am I going to build? I'm going to build as if disaster is going to hit and uh, that the Yankees game is not on the slate and that if Minnesota is. So give me Gossman and Maeda, uh, Krilov, Julian, Lewis, and Kepler. 
if the Yankees game plays, I'm going to take probably Judge, um, Floral, and maybe like the catcher, and then figure out who I want for the. Um, I don't know if I can create in their shortstop. I think I come up like a hundred short, but if not, then I might um, only go with four Minnesota, and then I'll go with Blue Jays and maybe punt catcher. So give me like uh, Bichette there, um, Springer, and then. Maybe I'll take Varsho or, or Kiermaier or somebody at outfield or Kirk at catcher or something like that. So that's how I'm playing for that. Uh, FanDuel, same thing. Gossman, um, Kirloff, Julian. And then I'm good. I can get comfortably a uh, full um, Baltimore, Minnesota stack. You just have to figure out how you want to do it with Gossman. But there, there's definitely in play or take a one off if you need to at one of the positions. GVP, uh, Bradish and Cobb. I'm going to try on, and that's, this is, of course, plays. So, uh, way at Estrada, Peterson, you I'm probably going to take the Yankees if they're in play as the chief villains. If not, I'll take more Minnesota guys uh, with my San Francisco stack and the same thing on, um, on fan or FanDuel. Yeah. Give me Webb as, as the pitcher. If you want to switch and go with somebody else, that's fine. I get it. Uh, but a strategy, some tree Peterson are the um, giants I'm going to take. And then I'm going to fill in with a Toronto stack. If you have to take a one off, take a one off. Uh, well, you would have to, if, because um, you're playing San Francisco and um, Toronto. So you can only play four and four with the pitcher. So you'd have to have a one off. So just figure out where that is. So, so I got for Major League Baseball. As always, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat below or hit me up at MegaWars of 31 on Twitter. So I'm going to try to switch this over and hopefully it works to my football sheet for showdown tonight. So we have the um, Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles. And it was... I know the Eagles didn't do as well um, as we thought they would during against the the Patriots and and Minnesota could not establish a, a decent um, run game at all uh, in their first game. So, but you know you got to take the first game with a grain of salt because I think everybody looked at that game and went out to play who plays um season long and wanted to get gain well on their team because I talked about it in the NFL video like. Philadelphia had four running backs. So what do you do? I, I was just like, avoid them all. And it seemed like Gainwell's a clear one. Penny was a healthy scratch, didn't even dress. So, you know, what to do with that? And, you know, Jefferson did his thing, definitely did did well. Uh, Kirk Cousins was Kirk Cousins, but um, Hawkinson was okay, but not as, as much as we thought he was. Addison, actually, who I said I liked as like a number three wide receiver, was um I think he caught a touchdown pass so you know there's definitely someone that I I kind of I like there so looking at showdown in cash I, I think you definitely your your two top players are gonna be Jalen Hurts and um, Jefferson just with what they do for their offenses Hurts you know has the running rushing upside as as a QB he'd be one of the top QBs if this was a classic slate and Jefferson would be one of the top wide receivers so I think you got to start there. And I usually like to take a quarterback just because the balls in, in cash, I'm looking for floor. So I'm looking for quarterbacks. I'm looking for running backs that are going to get fed the ball that are not in a platoon. Like I usually stray away from wide receivers, especially in the captain position, the less I know they're going to get a huge target share and, and completely get fed. Because again, I'm looking for floor. I'm looking for people that I'm going to put in my cash line that are, are usually guaranteed to get points and, and kickers are usually there sometimes too. I know there's a, there a chance that the team gets shut out that the kicker doesn't come out at all. But I just I just feel that they have more floor. So Hertz or Jefferson are the ones that I'm going to um take either in my captain. I'm gonna play the other one in the flex spot. And then I'm going to throw in Swift. He's gonna start at running back for Philly. I don't know what it's gonna bring, but I did like him at Detroit. I know he can catch balls out of the backfield and he's only four nine. So he's, he's really inexpensive and it kind of makes it work. So then from there, do you go to QBs and put cousins in the lineup? Do you take somebody to pair with Hertz, uh, AJ Brown and or Smith? Do you go cheaper and throw in a tight end like Hawkinson or, or Goddard? And then you take kickers and that's how I'm going to build my cash. It's like that pool that's up here, like right in here this the, these are like pretty much the cash place that i'm looking at if i need to take a one-off 
that's fine. But this is what I want to focus. I don't want the defenses in cash because I think it's going to be a, a decent scoring game. It's almost got a 50 total. So I don't think that, you know, I, I don't not oppose the defenses in, because they are out there. So they do have some floor and like sacks and intercepting and stuff add up, even if they're giving up points, it, it kind of it helps. So, but I really feel that the defenses are more of a GPP play in, in the context of the slate for GPP for like, a, like a, a simple GPP, I probably take Swift and, and I like sometimes taking somebody that I know is going to be a decent cash play and put them as captain It differentiates, but it opens up like the salary to get more studs. And so I can get Hurts, I can get Smith or Brown. I can, um, you know, run it back with Jefferson's or Cousins. If I try to do like all four, like quarterback wide receiver and stuff, then you you end up in like the punt section, like below a thousand dollars. I mean, there are some plays you can throw in there. It becomes more of a uh a yolo gpp sometimes in that i mean not completely yolo it, it just becomes less upside and more of you know, that punt really has to do something for you to come through but i mean if they don't you only use a couple hundred dollars and if all your studs work if you know you pick the right combinations of wide receiver and quarterback and it is a shootout and Swift like gets like one touchdown or like you know uh, enough catches to make value, then then it all all works there. And just the upside of having all those good players in your lineup um, really could hopefully bring you home and, and move you closer to the top. So my GPP fill in so taking Madison. I think he'll be lower owned uh, with uh, how bad things were last time there but i think he'll be fine but i said in the video there were times that cooks were out last year that madison had a great matchup and didn't rise to the occasion so i'll have to see what happens there uh addison and osborne are some of the probably the third and fourth wide receivers because hawkinson i definitely feel is the wide receiver too now that thielen has gone in minnesota so and addison did catch a touchdown but osborne I, I saw him do some good things when they had injuries last year and then i think the defenses could be in play here and also in gpp but i I kind of correlate it so if you think it's going to be a blowout and you're going to stack philly so take swift and then hearst and then brown and smith are both and then take the defense and then hopefully like swift gets like to run the the clock out or maybe you throw in penny or or uh, Scott in there with the the defense also thinking maybe they get the garbage time if uh, Swift is the the lead back so you know it's just gonna be kind of hard to guess some if you look at the duff chart Penny is ahead of Scott but he didn't get the play last week but maybe there was reasonings other than a healthy scratch on that so maybe he wasn't picking up the offense fast enough or whatever so we'll really have to kind of see what the the depth chart looks like and again it, it, it's a guessing game and if you um guess right then you know definitely can be beneficial if he gets like 30 40 yards um at the, at the end and maybe picks up a a, a cheap touchdown or, or something and the, the defense you know they, they're just like shut minnesota down um turnover cousins a bunch things like that so you, you just got to kind of figure out like what you fig- think anticipate the game flow is and just make sure your lineup correlates with that so like i said with my general gpp i'm probably going with trying to pair quarterbacks and wide receivers together with swift as a value there and then take a, a punt or somebody cheap on the bottom or one of the the not so popular wide receivers to pair up just to hope that you get um a, a lucky touchdown or something there and to win it and then for like more extreme GPP, I'm going to take Hawkinson and I'm going to sack uh, Minnesota, who's definitely the the dog here. And, you know, if Hawkinson, if um, Cousins and Jefferson are going to build like a Minnesota stack there, if you want to come off Jefferson and like put Hertz there to run it back with and thinking like if they cover Hawk- Jefferson and that's why like Hawkinson or Addison or Osmond are going to be open or maybe they run the ball with Madison if Jefferson's covered a lot. If they like go Belichick and just focus on taking away the number one weapon, then all these other ones are going to be open. Then that's a, a way to look at it also. And then I said for the deep punts here, you have Scott, you have uh, Ty Chandler, who is the backup to Madison, who um, did get some some runs there. Oliver is the backup uh, tight end to Hawkinson also. So, you know, goal line might approach a touchdown there or if there's an injury. And I threw Stoll in there. He really did nothing. And I don't anticipate him to do really anything in this game. But we have seen games where Goddard takes some hits and uh, 
been pulled out of the game and a backup tight end come in and get some catches and stuff and at, at a really really cheap price it might be someone to to look at again you're, you're you're taking like some deep shots here and and these are things that i do and like if you have the bankroll for in the 20 max three dollars just start like rotating in some of those like really cheap punt players and if one of like get your core lineup and keep it there and then just rotate the punts in each one sometimes if you don't have the bankroll then just do in the dollar and put a line put like scott in one and chandler in one and like get your core four or five you want and then rotate those last two people in and and just make sure there's correlation there and nothing that's negatively going to correlate and just try to um you know catch lightning in a bottle there and that might be the one and the final yolo gpp that i do and i don't recommend this again unless you have bankroll but if you don't have like a lot of bankroll you can always do it like the 25 cent one is i always every single slate and it, it only pays off like once a season i think i might have already got it although the the pairings with it did not work out on monday night is i always play the backup quarterback for each team in two in two lines so one line and one line two separate lines as the captain so tonight it's Mariota and it's Mullins I had Zach Wilson as a captain and a dollar GPP on uh Monday night because you never know what's going to happen uh and, and it did happen and I was excited but I didn't have the right people to paired with him so I did okay with that line but it wasn't um you know I had him paired up with with the wide receiver that caught the touchdown and stuff, if I had the jet defense, it would be much better, but I had too much, many other plays like Allen that just didn't um, pan out and it wasn't, um, you know, it, it was good, but it wasn't like spectacular, which it could be. But I mean, there was a time, I think it was Baker Mayfield went down and I, or like one of the guards or Minshew plays. There, there've been some times over like the years where, like Lamar Jackson's gone down and the backups come in and, and and done well. So every single showdown slate that I play on like um Thursday night or Sunday night or Monday night, I always play backup Q, QB in a dollar line for each team. I have a separate line that all correlates together. And, you know, through the course of the season, it's such a violent game and quarterbacks do get injured that it has paid off for me a couple times during the season. And um, I've done quite well. I've never quite got a takedown, gotten up into the top uh, 10 with this, but uh, definitely something that, um, you know, I, I always try just in case. So again, if you don't do it every single week, if you don't have the bankroll for it, especially, you know, those dollars can be very valuable. But if you do like, if you do want to do it, just throw in the, the 25 cents or something like that. So that's what I got for you. Again, if you have any questions on this, you can put it in the chat below. Also, I have a full NFL video on probably Saturday, or early Sunday morning. Again, this week, I'll try to get the names right and do a little bit better with that. And uh, remember that uh, the Chargers are now in Los Angeles and not in San Diego still. So uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, if these videos are helpful for you, you already helped by watching all those way through. But if you want to help us more, give us a like, subscribe to our channel so we know our videos are coming out and uh, share with your friends. And if you want more information on FSI DFS, you can always get into our Discord. And uh, the information to sign up for the packages is on in the description of the video. And um, should have some kind of NASCAR video coming up. We have a Thursday night race, a Friday night race, and a Saturday night race in Briscoe. For trucks and Xfinity, there's no... We'll have the, the information, so I might just do some shorts right before it when we have the actual information. So stay tuned for that. Another reason to subscribe to the channel and have your notifications on, you'll know when the videos drop. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you have an amazing Thursday. It leads into an amazing weekend. Good luck in your contest. I'll see you next time.